Chicago, Illinois, and Milwaukee, Wisconsin, two major Midwestern cities found on the western shores of Lake Michigan. The two are only 81 miles apart and are the most prominent cities in their respective states. Although Chicago and Milwaukee share many similarities, there are a lot of ways in which they are pretty different. Let's compare these two beautiful Great Lakes cities and discover some of what each has to offer. To start us off, let's get our bearings. Here's a map of Wisconsin and Illinois, and here are the locations of Milwaukee and Chicago. They sure do look close, right? Well, when you add in the boundaries of their official metropolitan areas, they are even closer. They nearly overlap with each other. Well, Racine County gets in the way a bit. Anyway, you can probably tell from this map that the Chicagoland area is a lot bigger than Greater Milwaukee. The city of Chicago has a population of roughly 2.7 million, and its total metro population is nearly 9.5 million. This makes it the third largest city proper and the third largest metro area in the whole country, behind only New York City and Los Angeles. The city of Milwaukee, on the other hand, has about 590,000 residents, and the overall metro area has a population of nearly 1.6 million. This makes the city proper the 31st largest city in the country, and the metro area the 39th largest. What is similar about these cities is their population changes, though. Both city propers are expected to have lost population between the 2010 and 2020 census, although Milwaukee lost a larger percentage. Chicago's metro area in its entirety lost only 3,000 people in this time, leaving it more or less stable in growth, while Milwaukee's metro area gained about 20,000. We'll talk a bit more about these population trends later in the video. The history of these cities, like many others found in the Great Lakes region, is heavily based around transportation, industry, and innovation. Before Europeans arrived in the 1600s though, the Chicago area was inhabited by various Algonquin peoples. Several French explorers scoped out the region throughout the 1600s and 1700s, and by the 1780s the first permanent settler built a farm at the mouth of the Chicago River, Jean-Baptiste Pointe du Sable. Chicago was incorporated as a town in 1833, and then as a city on March 4th, 1837. Milwaukee has similar origins to Chicago. The French had also been exploring southeastern Wisconsin during the 17th and 18th centuries. The first settlers, Jean-Baptiste Mirando and Jacques Viau, established a fur trading post in modern-day Milwaukee in 1795. By the 1840s, several small towns had emerged along the Menominee and Milwaukee rivers, and on January 31st, 1846, they combined to incorporate as the city of Milwaukee. Both cities saw extreme economic booms during the 19th and 20th centuries. The two competed for regional dominance of the rapidly industrializing Midwest, but it was Chicago that quickly emerged as the most important regional city, and one of the most important cities in the world. In fact, by the end of the 1800s, Chicago was the fifth most populous city in the world. Its location on a convenient portage between the Mississippi River watershed and the Great Lakes system played a huge part in why it won out over Milwaukee. Top industries in Chicago throughout this time period included the railroad industry, as the hub for the country, steel production, pumping out 10% of the world's steel during the 1940s, retail innovation, as the origins of Sears and Marshall Fields, to name a few, and most famously, meatpacking, described as hog butcher for the world by Carl Sandburg. During this same time, Milwaukee became the urbanized and economic hub for the state of Wisconsin, and its major industries included brick manufacturing, as the home of the world's largest brickyard, tanneries, again as the home to the world's largest such facility at one point, commodity storage and processing, and closely tied to that, breweries. This was largely due to Milwaukee's significant German population, and famous beer brands such as Miller helped to give the city the largest brewing capacity in the world. However, like much of the industrial Midwest in the post-war years, both Chicago and Milwaukee suffered rapid deindustrialization and suburbanization. Chicago's peak population of about 3.6 million in 1950 has fallen nearly 1 million since then, and Milwaukee's peak population of about 740,000 has dropped by about 150,000. Despite this overall trend of the larger Rust Belt, Chicago has been fairly successful at maintaining its prominence as a world city. In 2019, it was ranked at number 8 on the Global Cities Index, and has one of the most balanced economies of any world city. The city itself is home to 14 Fortune 500 companies as of 2020, 
And the greater Chicagoland area has a gross metropolitan product of $703.9 billion. Over in Milwaukee, four Fortune 500 companies have corporate headquarters within city limits, and the entire metropolitan area has a gross metropolitan product of $103 billion. These two cities are both incredible hubs of culture, food, architecture, and so much more that makes them excellent cities to visit. Chicago received 58 million visitors during 2018, which made it the second most visited city in the country behind New York City. Both cities offer far too many attractions to list them all, so I'll name some of the most famous and respectable ones. Some of the most famous destinations in Chicago include the Bean, officially the Cloud Gate, skyscrapers like the Sears Tower and the John Hancock Center, one of the 25 Michelin-starred restaurants and other culinary destinations, the top-notch comedy scene, Broadway in Chicago, one of the many world-famous museums, and the diverse cultural neighborhoods throughout the city. Milwaukee also offers amazing attractions, such as its historic Third Ward, Henry Meyer Festival Park, the gorgeous Milwaukee Museum of Art and other world-class museums, the iconic Bronze Fawn statue, and the Milwaukee Public Market. The city also offers an incredible brewing scene, of course, and a great variety of unique neighborhoods to explore. Both cities are also pretty well known for their public parks, but Chicago is especially famous for them. Its motto is literally city in a garden in Latin, after all. Lincoln Park, Grant Park, the various parks throughout the neighborhoods along the boulevard system, and more create some of the most iconic urban green spaces in the country. Chicago is also one of the top-ranked cities in the country for its biking infrastructure, ranked at number one in 2016, featuring the 606, Lakefront Trail, and countless bike lanes across the city. Don't count out Milwaukee just yet for its public parks though, as they've got the domes in Mitchell Park, which are iconic dome-shaped greenhouses, as well as beautiful public parks and protected greenways that stretch along the Milwaukee River and the lakefront. Milwaukee is also a decent biking city, although it ranked at 46th place in 2016, and it's been growing its biking infrastructure quite respectably in recent years. Chicago and Milwaukee are both amazing sports cities with die-hard fans, although Chicago does have more teams, understandably. For Major League Sports, Chicago offers the Cubs and White Sox for baseball, the Bears for football, the Blackhawks for hockey, the Bulls for basketball, and the Fire for soccer. Up in Milwaukee, they've got the Brewers for baseball and the Bucks for basketball. They root for the Packers, of course, in football, though that team comes from up in Green Bay. Getting around these cities is pretty convenient, although owing to its much larger size, Chicago has way better public transportation. The Chicago Transit Authority operates a subway system, the L, in Chicago and a few of its nearby suburbs, which is the second busiest subway system in the country after New York City. They also provide a comprehensive bus service on most major streets throughout the city. In the suburbs, Metra is the commuter rail service, and Pace provides bus service to many suburbs as well. Milwaukee's public transport is provided by Milwaukee County Transit System, which operates comprehensive bus service throughout the city and its suburbs found in Milwaukee County, as well as a brand new streetcar line running through downtown called The Hop, which opened in 2018. The city is planning to extend this as well. Chicago is served by two international airports, O'Hare on the northwest side and Midway on the southwest side, and O'Hare is the sixth busiest airport in the world. Milwaukee has just one international airport, Mitchell, which ranks as the 34th busiest airport in the country. Because O'Hare offers so many domestic and international destinations, people in the Milwaukee area often choose to fly out of there instead. And to finish things off, let's quickly talk about the flags for both cities. Chicago's flag, seen here, is one of the most iconic flags in the country and around the world, and has been in use since 1917. The white sections represent the north, south, and west sides of the city. The blue stripes represent the city's most important bodies of water, and the four red stars signify important events in the city's history, with the right-hand side stars having been added in 1933 and 1939. 
Milwaukee's current flag is interesting, to say the least, featuring a hodgepodge of literal representations of Milwaukee's characteristics. Several redesign contests have been held over the years, and most recently, the winner of the 2016 contest has found a great following. According to the designer Robert Lenz, the white rising sun represents a new day and peace, the three light blue reflections in the water represent the three rivers of the city and the three original founding towns, and the golden sky represents the city's history of brewing. This flag sure does know what's important. And that does it for this comparison of Chicago and Milwaukee. Although Chicago is the much larger and more global city in most categories, Milwaukee is a true titan of the Midwest. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and check out some of my other similar content. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.